I was recently in Morocco on a hash expedition. So I went to uh, Katama. I saw some fields, mountainsides actually, uh, huge, huge fields of weed. And uh, I was up at like 12,000, 14,000 feet. And these plants were thriving. They were enormous. They were triple overhead. I mean, sativas of course, mostly land races. And I started thinking, because I'm a hiker, and back in the States, you know, when you get to a certain altitude, there's what we call a timber line. Nothing grows. In the Northeast, where I'm from, about 6,000 feet, you're not going to see anything growing. Nothing more than, you know, a foot, a foot tall. But here I am at 12,000 feet, and I've got plants that are 12, 14 feet tall. So I started thinking, well, the soil's not that good. Irrigation ain't that good. So what's the factor here? Why are these things thriving? Of course, there's genetic evolution. There's, you know, these plants have adapted over millions of years. But I start to realize the power of the sun, the light that these things are getting are immense. But what this basically shows in terms of light is for every foot away from a light source, the strength of that light halves. And just started to dawn on me just how important light is. I mean, you hear it all the time. Aspects of growing, you have your nutrients, you have your atmosphere, you have your medium, and you have your light. But light, if you ask me, in my opinion, is the most underrated and most important aspect of growing. But I was out in California recently, and I was talking to a scientist, and he says, you know, Nico, we walk into our gardens, we walk into our grow rooms, and we look around and we say, how can I make this better? You know, like, I want more yield, or I want more, more potency. So we're, we, we amend our soils and our mediums, and we've maximized our nutrients and our plant food. We've started to figure out how to control pests and mold and disease. But you know what we never do? We never look up and say, What's coming from above? For 20 years, we've been using the same high intensity discharge lamps, HID lighting, your metal halides, your high pressure sodiums. Hasn't changed. Since we started growing indoors, we've been using the same lights. Well, just recently, you might have noticed this started to change. You guys are seeing LED lights. You guys are seeing electronic and digital ballast. You guys are seeing these new plasma lights. All these things are good because it's progression. It's moving us in the right way but there's pros and cons to some of these things, and there's some myths. Is when you get these new products, like these LEDs, light emitting diodes, they're diodes, those are the bulbs, they're very expensive to make. So a lot of manufacturers have settled on two, maybe three tones with their LEDs. Um, now there's some pros to using this kind of lighting. Obviously, you all know they use a lot less energy, they save you money. It's a security issue as well. It doesn't draw as much attention to you. You're not pulling like fucking 100,000 watts. It also doesn't make very much heat. So it saves you on your fans and your ventilation. But you're only giving your plants, in this case, red and blue spectrum. So what would happen if we all grew up and only ate carrots and chicken? We need all of the vitamins, all of the minerals to grow up and be regular humans and be natural species. It's the same thing applies to plants. I don't know if anybody here, has anyone grown with LEDs? Raise your hand if you've ever used LEDs. I mean, it's not a bad thing. I'm not, I don't want to put it down too much, but what I want to explain is that spectrum is the most important thing. So in my mind, these are very, very useful for a supplement. When you're using your HID lights and you add this, you're adding a broader variety of spectrum. This explains a little bit of the thinking of the LED manufacturers. If you look up on the screen here, the, uh, the white line here represents, not the colors, but the white line that goes up and then down and then up. This represents a cannabis's plant use of spectrum. If the bottom axis represents the full spectrum of the sun, starting at your 400 nanometers, which is your blues and violets, and working our way all the way up to your oranges and reds at the six, 700 nanometer wavelength, you realize that the spikes are in the blue, 
and the red. This is where the plant is most efficient at processing those spectrums. So the LED manufacturers came along and said, well shit, it's really expensive to make these lamps. They really can't afford to get your, your yellow and your orange and your green and your blue and you, well, forget about UV, we don't even get UV. We don't even get UV in our HID lamps. So what they said was, well, we'll make our LEDs and we'll make them blue and red. Seems to make sense, but here's the problem. It's like anything else. It just goes back to more science and evolution. When you're lacking something that you need, you become more efficient at processing it. So that's all it really is. It's just millions of years of evolution. The plants are more efficient at processing the blue and the red lights, but it's only because actually it's less present in nature. The underlying graphic with the color, that's the sun's natural spectrum. So you'll see, where does the sun's light spike in terms of spectrum? It spikes in the green, which as we know, plants usually reflect because of their chlorophyll, and then it spikes with its yellows and its oranges. And that's where the plant, you'll notice the white line again, is lowest. That's where the plant is least efficient at processing it. But that's only because they have an abundance of it. They don't need to say, oh my god, I have to use all of those wavelengths. Because they're just getting a ton of it. The ones they're not is the ones that they're trying to feed off of and really process. But the point is, the plant needs all of these spectral wavelengths to really fully maximize its potential. So when people ask me all the time, they say, what do you think about these LED lights? I say the most important thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to mimic the sun's natural light, the sun's full spectrum. So now you're starting to see a lot of LED manufacturers with full spectrum lamps. I haven't seen any that are fully there yet, but they will be. So, th so there was this uh, guy in California. He works for the United Nations, and he's developing sustainable programs uh, to feed the world. Uh, it's a really, it's a noble endeavor. And what they're trying to do is in countries like India or places with really harsh climates and huge populations where people are starving, they need to figure out ways to feed these people. So obviously they're gonna bring it inside and they're gonna try to grow. And this scientist who works for the United Nations said, well, we've been using the same lighting for 20 years, you know, we really gotta figure something else out that's better. So he designed a system, Happy, could we stay on this picture for a second? He designed a system, he uses these spinning lamps, you've probably seen them, if you read High Times, you've definitely seen them. I don't wanna talk about the spinning aspect of them, but that's just a delivery system. There's some pros and cons to that as well. But I'm gonna to try to stay purely on the light aspect and spectrum again. What he does is, on each of these arms that you'll see on these spinning systems, is actually a different bulb. <clears throat> these are plasma lights, and what they do is each one has a different Kelvin rating, meaning it, it provides a different specific wavelength of the spectrum. If you have four, and he has a six arm spinner too, if you have four or six of these different bulbs, it really spans that full spectrum that you just saw before, and it even goes beyond. He actually has 10,000 Kelvin rated bulbs that provide UV light. We never use UV light in our grow rooms. All of us growers here, we've never seen it. I mean, we use UV sometimes to try to kill pathogens and stuff in the grow room, but we don't really feed it to our plants, but the plants need it. Us as humans, we try to block that shit out. We don't want that we put on all our sunscreen and stuff. We don't want UV, but guess what? The plants, the plants need UV. So people are really starting to open their minds now and look up and say, wow, the sun, but I'm in my bedroom or in a closet, and what am I gonna do? So people are really starting to realize that what we want to do is mimic, this, mimic the sun and try to provide fuller spectrum for our plants. 